Thank you. Bye. So next we move to um, the Victoria Neighbourhood Association, Louise Edwards. Louise, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the table. And you've got um, 10 minutes for your submission. You can take the mask off if you want. Um, entirely your choice. Kia ora, and good morning. Lovely to see you all. Uh, my name's Louise Edwards, and I serve as chair of the Victoria Neighbourhood Association, also known as the VNA. And I'd also like to introduce Murray Jamison, who also is on our committee. Good morning. So I assume I can... Oh. I'm in control, excellent. So the Victoria Neighbourhood Association was started 37 years ago. We're an inner city residents association and represent our 179 members who live in or own property within the streets bounded by Salisbury Street, Victoria Street, Bailey Ave and Colombo Street. We've recently made a submission around the vacant land um, differential rates and would like to speak to that to say that we support the differential rates. We agree that vacant land within the central city should attract higher rates to act as a disincentive for land banking. Higher rates should also encourage owners to act sooner or to sell to someone who will. In our small, small neighbourhood we there are, a, are 10 vacant sections, some quite large and with no consented development that we know of which could be used for additional dwellings. If the council is serious about encouraging more people to live in the central city, this is a proactive step towards that goal. We also incre uh, support increasing rates for derelict building. To us, this is another obvious step consistent with these other steps discussed. We believe in less derelict and damaged buildings are included in the same scheme, the council would be encouraging owners not to demolish such buildings thereby step, sidestepping differential rates on vacant land. We, we urge the council to extend this to derelict damaged buildings within the residential central city zone as well. We support introducing rates remission for well-maintained land. We agree that in some cases this condition would be acceptable. However, we think there should be a specified time limit that the proposed council discretion should include a high bar which must be achieved before the exemption is applied and temporary consent should not include non-residential activities on residential land. I'll now hand over to Murray, because we didn't want to lose this opportunity to get one of our main bugbears in um, as part of the submission. So I'll hand over to Murray to discuss that submission. Yes, thanks very much. Would you put the map of our... Um, there we go. There's the VNA area, and you can see what a large area it is. And it's already been stated there's 179 odd members or people involved, and they all, are all very well involved um, in the community. So, the additional submission support that I'm bringing in is the Central City Shuttle. Um, you, you have these in front of you, do you? Yes, good. So, our members were very disappointed, there's no mention of the shuttle was in the draft plan. We've consulted with all our membership and as well as others in the neighbourhood, many times about the reintroduction of the shuttle. It was almost 100% support. In fact, even when consulting on different matters, the shuttle usually features as one of the top priorities. Um, people living within the neighbourhood were, were regular users of the shuttle pre-earthquakes. It was an easy to use, effective way of getting into, around and out of the CBD without a car. Now this is an important point now, isn't it? We're all looking at reducing submissions. This is a win-win way of encouraging more people to visit or live in the central city. Reducing submissions and telling everyone in Christchurch that the CBD is open for business. Reducing submission um, emissions now is obviously a high priority everywhere let alone here in Christchurch. And this is an easy way to do it. On behalf of our members and other residents, we strongly urge the council to either work with ECAN to jointly bring back the shuttle or to finance it alone. I recently spoke in an ECAN meeting and brought up uh, that the shuttle was an important part and it's something you guys and ECAN could perhaps do together 
and it's like a gift to the city. How could it be a loser? This is one that's going to reduce emissions and bring people back in. I have personal friends that moved out to Rangiora, to Rolleston, etc., after the earthquakes. But now, that they don't like the parking situation, but if there's a shuttle, they would come back in and use the central city. It's a magnificent vehicle to do. So, um, if you could work with ECAN, and I'm sure something could be done, uh, I'd, I'm slight costing, it, it's probably about a million bucks a year, I'm not sure, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to other costs involved, I think, to get people back in the city. It's a great PR thing. There are several... Um, oh, okay, so I suggest that it does not necessarily have to be free, although I think that would be a good for initial point to get people back on it. There are several options, including one, a very small fare, or an optional donation, which we are sure many patrons would happily pay if this is the only way to provide a much-needed service, a gold coin or something like that. That's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry I came in part way through the conversation. Is that, is that Celeste? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure whether I was asking a question or not. Thank you. I, I enjoyed your submission. Um, in terms of the shuttle, I was just asking Pauline whether it falls under us or we can, but is it something, those kinds of ideas that about inviting people into the central city might be a good thing we could fund through this rates differential? Because, you know, it's a... Is yes, that so that, that be sounds to me like it would be a good or option. other examples like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the ECAN, when I spoke there, the um, chair there thought it was an interesting um, idea. And after I spoke, we had Michael Davidson spoke. And the man brought it up with Michael and said, is this a feasible option? So there it is, guys. It's on the table. I mean, what more? could Christchurch would love it. The world would love it. What did Michael say? <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was very clever. He said, "It's an. It's a conversation we could have." <laughs> Politicians answer. Okay, thank you. I, I agree, though. The additional rates take could and you have already identified it would potentially be for beautification of the central city. But you'd have to think that transportation and attracting people into the central city would also be a good objective as well. And the emissions. I mean, this is an immediate one you can drop in and say, right, we're going to, by using, obviously, electric buses or whatever, it, it's a win-win a right the way through. Yeah, I think, I think people look back on the previous shuttle with a little bit of rose-tinted glasses. Mm -hmm. the, the shuttle um, wasn't electric at the end, it no. was diesel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it might have been painted yellow, but that it didn't actually reflect um, the fact that it had changed. And the other thing is, is that those buses are too big for Colombo Street. Mm -hmm. They are, oh, I see. Oh. and um, you know, so so we would actually need something a bit more bespoke. Would you agree with that? I'm um, sure, but something, um, yes. Why not? Instead of having big, cumbersome ones, something maybe half the size, mm. and more, and it's a regular route. Everyone knows where it's going, and if it runs every ten minutes, there's a number of them. They just, oh, here it comes, and they're on. Yeah, Fantastic. And I think that's what happened last time. I mean, people think it was one shuttle, but it wasn't. No. <laughs> it, because it, you could rely on it coming by every 10 minutes, then um, there were there was more than one on the route. So, no, I mean, we, we have raised this. Um, we've raised it at the um, Greater Christchurch Partnership. We've raised it with ECAN. We've raised it constantly. But it, we do think it needs to be an integrated part of the public and active transport system um, which we continue to dream about um, as a council, looking jealously at the um, decision making in terms of the, the bus services themselves. But um, it's absolutely understood on this side of the, um, that equation, and um, we will continue. So thank you very much for your submission. Thank you guys for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have um, 